All right, so what am I going to try and do today in the 30 minutes I have available? <clears throat> the impossible is the answer. And so what I'm really going to do is just introduce you to an idea, the idea of dirty hands, and then say a few things about it, show you how it is part and parcel of our general cultural understanding of what goes on. It's part of how we understand our moral reality, despite the fact that moral theorists think it's a very bad idea. And then at the end, I'm going to give you an actual example in Germany of something that looks like a dirty hands case that was dealt with by the law. And then I would like to hear what you have to say about it, what your intuitions are, whether you think this is plausible. Because there are a lot of people who think that what I'm about to say to you is just flat wrong, incoherent. And other people seem to think uh, not only is it incoherent, it's dangerous, what I'm going to say. So uh, Elizabeth Anscombe, very famous philosopher, said people who even contemplate this kind of thing show a corrupt mind. So I'm, I'm bringing you into a world of corruption here if you are with Elizabeth Anscombe. Uh, that said, it's, it's not quite as exciting as that. Uh, so, uh, sorry. All right, so let's start and see where we are. Let's start with a claim. Is it possible to do a morally wrong action in order to do what is morally required? Seems a very weird thing to ask. Right. Sounds either paradoxical or just incoherent or just sheer nonsense. You know, it's like saying, are they married bachelors? Are they square circles? If I was to stand up here and say, let's have a chat about married bachelors, you'd be well within your rights to think he's a nutter and get up and leave, right? And you might still think this, but hang on a moment, right? So what's going on here? Why, why would that view somehow make an appearance within moral theory? What, what's going on there? And what I'm going to try and do is paint a picture for you of why that might be plausible in moral theory, not only plausible, unavoidable in moral theory, and specifically in politics. Right, so there are different reactions to what I've just said to you. There are the moral theorists that I mentioned who are deeply worried. Not all, but most are deeply worried about what I've just told you. They think that I'm misleading you and it's deeply problematic. Consequentialists, people who think that you judge morality by the consequences of your actions, and deontologists or duty theorists who think you judge it by your intentions and your motives, agree at least on this, that I'm wrong when I'm telling you about dirty hands. Right? And I'm not going to say a great deal about that, I'm going to point you to some readings later on that you can go and read yourself, but there's a whole story to be told about why I think they're not right in their criticism of me, but I can't go deeply into it. Just take it from me for the moment, on trust, trust me, I'm a doctor, right, that they don't agree with me, and there are arguments against them. But I, I'm going to try a different route. I'm going to go via the literary route and the, uh, the film route and then uh, an example route and see how your intuitions go. And at the end, you might agree with me or you might agree with a the moral theorist. That would be absolutely fine. Okay, let's start off here. What does it mean to get dirty hands then? What, what's, what's a neat or at least a plausible starting definition that you can use that we can at least get a grip on and try and work through as we, as we go through this, this topic? Well, a person gets dirty hands when they violate an important moral value in order to bring about a lesser evil in moral conflict situations. That's quite a mouthful. But let me just try and unpack it a little bit for you. We face situations where we have moral conflicts or moral dilemmas. And in those situations, the options that the person who has to act have are either bad or worse, or catastrophic and abysmal, or whatever kind of descriptions you want to give it. There isn't an option of good or bad. If there was an option of good or bad, we haven't got a problem. We just do the good. Right? But Many situations in life we find where our options are circumscribed either by the evil actions of other people or the immorality of other people or just by natural circumstances. And there we have to make a decision that's a very painful one about which evil to choose which you think will be the least problematic. But in dirty hand situations, the person who dirties his hands becomes guilty of a moral crime. This very famous ticking bomb scenario Many people think of it as the infamous ticking bomb scenario because they think such a scenario misguides us into what we should think. But someone plants a bomb in the center of London. You've caught the person who's done it. They're mocking you and saying it's going to blow up and kill thousands of people and ruin the city and financial collapse. And they won't tell you where the bomb is. There's no way you can evacuate should you torture them to try and get the information. Torture is not a little simple thing to think about. 
People who torture are not civilized. Torture is wrong, always wrong. Right. Punish them, yes, but you don't torture them. But in these circumstances, the evils are such that you might think of torturing. And some people will say to you, well, maybe if that person planted the bomb, they deserve to be tortured. No, no one deserves to be tortured. And even if you're worried about that, you can say, well, don't torture the, the bomber. Torture the bomber's child. Then you've got a real problem, right? Because <laughs> a child certainly doesn't deserve to be tortured. No one's going to argue that. Right? So you have that kind, of, that kind of moral crime. I mean, that's an extreme example. There are many other kinds that we can talk about, but I'm doing this rather quickly. Right? What's also interesting about dirty hands is that the person who so acts also gets praised for doing what's courageous and difficult in a very difficult scenario. So it's paradoxical in that sense. You're both committing a crime and doing something good. We'll come back to that in a moment. And what's more, the person who becomes, who does the dirty hands, becomes morally polluted from the justified act of lying or betraying or using violence or something of that kind. So you have this really strange situation where a good person in a situation does something terrible to bring about a lesser evil, is now guilty of a moral crime, and is morally polluted. Right. That's, that's pretty scary. Right. Okay, so that's, that's what we mean in a broad sense of what we have in dirty hands. Now, dirty hands occurs in all areas of our lives. And if I had time, I would give you examples in our private life and all the rest of it. But where it occurs most, most often and most dramatically is in politics. And, and for reasons I'm going to explain at the moment. Politics, if it's not in nothing, it's all about compromise. And when you compromise, you end up choosing lesser evils. And because you're choosing lesser evils, you end up getting your dirty hands. I'm not suggesting that all cases of dirty hands are as dramatic as the ticking bomb. You might just be involved in lying. Who thinks of politicians that don't point, some point don't lie or dissemble or stab their colleagues in the back? You know, I'm not even talking about what's going on at the moment. I'm just talking generally, right? Politicians do all those kinds of things all the time because that's the nature of politics, or at least it always has been the nature of politics and probably will be with us for a very long time. Right? So compromise is endemic to politics and we never never can have a situation where, well, you, know, you very rarely have a situation where in politics you don't have some kind of dirty hand scenario going on. What's more, politics also involves extrication. People pick up the messes of their predecessors. When Obama became president of the United States, he inherited two wars and an economic crisis. Not of his, own, not of his making, but he inherited them. He couldn't do the kinds of things he wanted to do, or his instincts told him to do, because he had to extricate himself from the situation that he inherited. Politics is a very much about that. And thirdly, politics is about protecting us from enemies, both internal, external, from the natural and social evils that are out there. And it's difficult to behave morally in a world where there are evil people and evil organizations trying to harm us. Sometimes you have to be, let me put it this way, you have to have means to bring about certain ends, and those means are not the best or the most moral means to get there. So you lie, and you manipulate, and sometimes you use violence to get the kinds of things you need to do for worthwhile ends. So politics is the natural home, if you like, of dirty hands. As I said, it doesn't mean it's the only place, but it's the natural home of dirty hands. Let me turn to some pictures now to give you a bit of a break from all this. You find the dirty hands premise in so many of our movies and TV shows and books and all over. And I'll just give you a, a random example from recent times. Those of you that don't know what that is have not been living on this planet, right? <laughs> Millions of people are, have, have, all over the world have been looking at this. That is Ned Stark sitting on the Iron Throne. And the premise of this movie, amongst all the other things with dragons and zombies and all the rest of it, is that there you had, and I hope it's not going to be a spoiler, so if, if you haven't seen anything of the first, first series, stick your fingers in your ears now and go la 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 for the next two minutes, right? Uh, Ned Stone is a good man, and his goodness destroys him. And that's not the only problem. Being destroyed by his goodness is not in itself a terrible calamity. It is for, for Ned. But, not, but everybody else who depended on him to be more wily and cunning as a politician are now going to suffer. And what you see in the Game of Thrones is the unfolding of his failure to some degree. Right? So there you had a person who didn't get their hands dirty, or refused to get their hands dirty, was too stupid to get their hands dirty, or too good to have their hands dirty, and calamity. All around, hundreds of fingers and ears, fingers and ears, hundreds of thousands of people 
we think it, but it died because of him, plus all the other untold misery. So there's one case where underlying that is the premise of what happens when you have to deal with evil p persons. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.